and it's good to share the word of God once again and with the brothers and sisters this morning. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity again. Please turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. Gospel of chapter Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 7 to 11. We've been meditating on uh, <coughs> the theme of prayer for the last uh, last probably three two, two weeks. This is the third week we are uh, meditating on the same. So we'll continue to read um, Matthew chapter seven seven to eleven. Ask and it shall be given given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he has ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Let us bow down on a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this one more talk, opportunity to come to your feet, to meditate on your words. Father, Lord, thank you for this uh, precious words which speak truth in our hearts, which opens our eyes, and to know this Lord in reality, to know you are fresh, and Lord, to teach us how to pray, to teach us how to lead our life in the various situations what we come across in our lives. Father, Lord, I'm not worthy to take your word on my mouth, but Lord, cover me behind the cross. And Lord, speak, let the words alone be spoken to them, thy children be spoken, Lord. Enlighten them, and Lord, quicken their hearts. And let this be a time where, Lord, as the body of Christ, we'll be, we'll grow closer to you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we... Um, as I said to you before, like we, we talked, we meditated on two few topics already. So let me just uh, sum up on what uh, we did in the last couple of weeks. So it's good to quickly recollect and then go on to today's uh, meditation. So for initially, we talked about why why we should take our difficult situations or battles to the Lord, um, and we we seen three seven reasons why we should do it. Because the Lord Himself taught us to do it. Secondly, we are bringing this omnipotent Lord in the equation to help us out in the situation. Thirdly, we are we are bringing this Lord of all knowledge, the omniscient Lord, to help us out. Fourthly, we are bringing this Holy Spirit to guide us in difficult situation. Fifthly, we have the assurance that the Lord says He cares for us, so He intercedes for us, so we can rest in peace. Sixthly. We can see the enemy who's in front of us in a difficult situation so that we pray in the right direction. Seventhly, we have the clear assurance the battle will be won when we take it to the Lord. Second week, we, uh, we meditated on the practicalities of praying. So it's always good to pray early in the morning with clear mind where without becoming uh, become polluted with the world, worldly things. We were praying in a solitary place, praying in secret, to pray kneeling down. And uh, then we talked about the structure of our prayer. We, we talked about the mnemonic of acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Finally, today, uh, we will meditate on the attitude. This is probably the most important um, thing, what the Lord is looking for uh, while we pray how our attitude, our hearts should be while we pray. Because and this is an area where it should make a difference whether uh, our prayer is going to be successful or not. Uh, because the Lord looks our attitude when we pray. So four things, when, we, when I meditated on the word, on the scripture, on this area, four things uh, was brought up. And these are four pillars of the table. And each are important. And um, First thing is, I'll en and enlist all the four things and I'll go into that in detail. 
First thing is praying for the will of God to prevail. And secondly, praying with a righteous heart. Thirdly, praying with a heart full of faith. Fourthly, praying with an unceasing spirit. So unceasing prayer. So it's in order basically. Because when I was looking to scriptures, Lord, when I was looking to what is more important among them, probably it's all important, all the four legs. But uh, praying for the will of God is probably the most important thing when we pray. And it's probably one of the forgotten areas where we pray as well. You can, you can check ourselves when different people pray, we often miss out this. We straight go into supplications and then we thank, we thank the Lord and then we finish. We do not ask for the will of God. But the Lord teaches clearly why is it important. Because when he was tested, when he was going through the most difficult phase, of his, um, of his life before, uh, after the Lord's Supper in the garden of uh, Gethsemane was praying, he taught us so let's turn to Matthew chapter chapter 26 verse 38 chapter 26 verse 38 so in here it says, Then said he unto, unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. And he went to a little father and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Moving on to verse 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, Except I drink it, thy will be done. Again, 44th verse. And left them again, and went away, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Three times, same words, saying that thy will be done, thy will be done. So it's important, even, even before we start praying, we can ask for his will to be done, because we could be easily carried away with our prayer. And it's always important to finish. If you look at it, every every uh, every ending of it, it says, "Thou will be done." It's probably very important. But even before we can start our prayer, the, we know that uh, the Lord, he, Lord is aware of every desire which starts from our heart. Every needs He knows, every desires is He knows. And uh, Matthew, if you look at Matthew um, chapter six and verse eight, it clearly says, "Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth." that things ye have need of before ye ask him. So we have the assurance he knows everything before we ask. And he know when we know that, but he become we are asking purely because he's instructed us to ask. And and that and that and praying for the will of God is very important. Secondly, praying with the righteous heart. Um, if you look at Matt, uh, James chapter James chapter five verse sixteen Later part of the verse, can any of us read uh, James chapter 5, verse 16? Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Thank you. And the English Standard Version says, The prayer of a righteous person has great power and is working. So, and, um, so it's important because it, the, the, the logic is very simple. When, when, we have a, when we lead a righteous life, automatically our heart is in line with the, with the Lord. And we can't ask for anything which is unrighteous or wicked. Because you can, you can say, if, if somebody is asking something out of our personal uh, motive, which could be, um, um, it could be clouded with maybe um, envy or uh, bitterness or uh, perhaps um, jealousy or whatever it could be, we can stay assured that Lord is not going to be on our side. Because uh, Lord hates unrighteousness. And, and, and be leading a righteous life and praying in righteous uh, attitude has its own reward. So, um, and Proverbs, um, look at uh, Proverbs chapter 15, 
29 clearly says on chapter 15 29 the lord is far from the wicked but he hear the prayer of the righteous clearly is with distinctions clearly there so that is another attitude of our heart very important so but you that you it could be very you can you before we start you can say whether the lord will please with my attitude of the heart or not before we put a supplication when we need a righteous life thirdly praying with a heart full of faith so here uh, trusting that the heavenly father will do the best in every situation but trusting that he will get everything not that well, whatever we are asking will be done but whatever is best for our life will be done so that's two different things and um, say for example uh, good good uh, parent uh, father uh, heavenly father uh, earthly father if he gives everything to a child what the child ask for then uh, we know what the child will be become when they when they grow or because they will be spoiled but the, the father looks at the timing of when to give chooses the right thing and then gives the right right thing to him. so asking provided but with the faith that the lord will give things at the, at the right time the right choice will be given to us that is very important and uh, and that's what we read in Matthew chapter uh, 7 and uh, verse 11 even the even if we are evil we know that we are all sinners we have evil motives attitudes everything in us even if we look at the best thing for our child what how more the heavenly father will look at our needs and it's not our wants looking at our needs and he'll give it at the right time uh, i was just i was looking at this how how our human understanding is very different to our heavenly father's understanding by by in us the way we are made up uh, we are hardwired to find one thing and we want that so a person called gillette hb gillette so she would have known about it we, we had a we had a teaching on it hb gillette is a person from california he is a he pioneers in anal mind analysis and how somebody reaches to a conclusion and uh, and he's a counselor and various things. But when he when he looked at how a person comes to decision making, this theory is called formal decision making. When it comes to decision making, uh, we, when we look at something, for example, say I, I want a job in particular area in that practice or whatever. All I want is that. My my mind is hardwired to that. But what he says is, no, go into an investigative mode. Get some knowledge from various directions, do some research, find more options what is in front of you and choose, choose the best option of all. So there are lots of permutation combination coming along here. Then you find the best option. But when we when we have when we have when we pray with that attitude to the Lord, we can rest in peace that the Lord will do the research for us. We, we, we could be hardwired, but the Lord, when we say, Lord, let thy will be done, the Lord looks at different aspects, what is good for us, what, okay, I have asked for that, why is, why am I asking, what I'm asking, what is the available options, pros and cons, what is the best time to give to me, and we can rest assured that he will do the best for us. And uh, again, if we look at 1 John chapter 5, uh, chapter four, uh, verse 14, First John chapter 5 verse 14. It says, And this is the confidence what we have in them, in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. That is the greatest confidence we have in him, that he would do for us if we ask it according to his will, the best that we get the best option we have in our life. Fourthly, uh, fourth and the final one and praying without ceasing without stopping praying uh, we read in first Thessalonians chapter 5 uh, 16 to uh, to 19 and that uh, says pray without rejoice evermore pray without ceasing and everything give thanks Lord asks us to pray continually there are lots of scriptures across the, across the uh, all over saying that to, to constant prayer uh, and ceaseless prayer and Lord teaches us through the parable in Luke 18 as well like you can uh, that the poor um, uh, powerless widow person the widow 
when uh, and she goes to this uh, king for, and asks him for for a justice. And then, then the message from that passage, Luke 18, the parable is that, you know, by persistence, if a, if a corrupt human, that king, corrupt human of limited power, can do justice for that widow, how much more we could be assured that with our constant prayer to our Lord, the Lord of eternal powers, the majestic powers, can do the best for our lives. That's the hope what we have today. And it's not, and Lord that does not tire us, tired of asking. As to be, we can ask Him all the time, um, provided we wait in patience and um, ask Him uh, for His will all the time. Then it will be done at the right time. Right? Um, and there was, there was one point. There was a father and a son who lived together. The father was a very busy man. He worked seven days a week. And uh, he used to encourage his little son um, for every every good uh, like achievement in his sports or his education. He used to uh, he used to give him a reward, and uh, and he achieved something. The father uh, gave him said, okay, what do you want? The boy asked for a fishing trip, so he said, you know, go for a fishing trip. The guy will do that. And um, this and time went by. Dad's work lot became even more busier. And a uh, few weeks went by, there was no, uh, nothing, no talk about it. And this boy came and reminded the dad, and said, okay, okay, we'll go. And it was still the winter season, so he was not in a time to organize everything. And a few months went by, and he came again, asking in a very, uh, very gentle, not persistent, but not demanding in a way. No, no father, you know, please take me for a fishing trip. So, and before it became too late, and the, Lord, the father thought, hmm, that my, my son should not be too disappointed. I know I'm busy. He organized the time with his workplace and everything. And he made sure he got the best option, best choice. In a, in a, in a, some, it came into a nice uh, sunny time. And he took him out for a fishing trip. Um, and that and son rejoiced that day. It was, a, it was a surprise for him on that day. But he had the best, best choice for that day. That was that is the Lord actually, and we might have, uh, we might we there we only see certain things in front of us, but the Lord sees everything around us. So let's be encouraged by these words, and as uh, we, to end up, let's say uh, let's not be the doers of this, the hearers of this word, but doers of of this of this word, uh, in following everything Lord teaches us, uh, including. Um, our attitude, more importantly, the attitude of our heart, what the Lord looks for before, um, before the Lord. Thank you again.